One thing I've been surprised by recently is the amount of popularity that the LEGO games continue to have. Despite their target market primarily being children, they've also been able to capture the hearts of older audiences. Not only that, but there are entire YouTube channels that are fully dedicated to discussing them and they get like millions of views. So. Out of curiosity, I played LEGO Marvel Super Heroes and DC LEGO Super Villains over the past two months. And well, I was delightfully surprised. They're pretty fun games, but I believe they're also really good examples of a neat gameplay format and a well-known IP collaborating to create something greater than the sum of their parts. So what exactly goes on in a standard LEGO game? Most LEGO games are level based and they're often connected by an overarching story. In each level, there are basically three things you do. Traverse the world by breaking objects and building them into something useful, beat baddies that usually appear in droves, and solve puzzles that will make you question your intelligence if you fail. At the end of each level, there's usually a boss battle, which will require a mixture of those three gameplay styles I mentioned earlier. Another standard feature of LEGO games is the open world, where you can unlock characters and collect gold bricks by doing an assortment of tasks. What's so funny about the LEGO games is that their gameplay has largely stayed the same throughout the years. Not much has changed when it comes to the standard gameplay loop. There's always so much collecting, puzzle solving, and button mashing that it kinda gets old if you're looking for an innovative and creative gaming experience. But there's a kind of comfort in the repetition for those that enjoy chill and laid back gaming experiences where they would always know what to expect, the LEGO game franchise is a good option. But you know what the LEGO video games are best at? Adapting intellectual properties with huge worlds and a ton of characters. That's why the most well-known LEGO games have been adaptations of Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Marvel, and DC. Superhero universes fit the LEGO video game format especially well because they have the biggest roster of diverse and in-depth characters, as well as very iconic worlds and locations. I mean, if you want players to put in effort to unlock characters, those characters better be cool as heck. And if you want players to go back and replay levels to collect every little knickknack that they missed out on, each of those levels better look unique. So why does the superhero universe have such great characters and settings? Unlike the universes of most fictional properties, the worlds of Marvel and DC are not made by a single author. What makes superhero universes special is that they are the result of the work of multitudes. Many writers and artists working at the same time on different comic books featuring different characters. Because of that, the scale of what they could accomplish is insane. Marvel and DC put out more books than you can feasibly read and because they choose comic books which don't cost much to make as their format for storytelling, the writers and artists can take risks. They can make comic books on lesser known characters like Booster Gold and Nova. Heck, even villains like Lex Luthor and MODOK have had their own miniseries. What's so special about the characters of Marvel and DC are their depth. There are so many great characters with amazing runs who have not even reached the big screen. Or even if they did, they only played a minor role in a show or film. The simple format of LEGO games allows lesser known comic book characters to be in the spotlight. The simplicity of the LEGO games both in graphics and gameplay actually works in their favor because it allows the developers to achieve what other comic book adaptations cannot. 
The roster of the two games I've played is really extensive and deep. LEGO Marvel Super Heroes has all of the main Marvel teams, like the Avengers, X-Men, Fantastic Four, and the Guardians of the Galaxy. Throughout the game, you also visit a lot of iconic Marvel locations like the Baxter Building, the X-Mansion, Rikers Island, and even Latveria. It's honestly pretty cool to see all of these characters and locations in one game. And what's even cooler is the fact that specific characters have specific mechanics attached to them. Wolverine can dig to find stuff on the ground, Captain America has to use his shield to deflect certain beams coming from machines or enemies, and Reed Richards basically transforms into anything the game requires. And some of the things he transforms into to legitimately made me laugh out loud in my playthrough of the game. And again, because this game doesn't cost as much to make, the game also features a lot of characters on the more unknown side, like Squirrel Girl, Beetle, Archangel, Juggernaut, Captain Britain, and even the Blob. There's a sense of childlike joy and wonder knowing that you can skydive off of the shield hell carrier as Howard the Duck and Galactus. It's so bafflingly hilarious and there's a kind of charm to just how many Marvel characters you can play as. LEGO DC Super Villains takes the foundation of LEGO Marvel Super Heroes and builds upon it surprisingly well. Released in 2018, five years after LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, you can really tell just how much the developers learned over the years. The graphics are gorgeous, the cutscenes are borderline cinematic, and the gameplay for flight, speed, and the many other powers your characters have is very polished, smooth, and fun. There are new game mechanics designed for specific comic book characters, which is really cool. Like Joker being able to call his henchmen to become a ladder for him to climb on, and the Flash using the cosmic treadmill to enter into the speed force. But again, the characters in the world are the true highlight of the game. Just like LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, LEGO DC Super Villains lets you choose from a wide array of DC Comics' most iconic characters. You can play as Beast Boy and Raven from the Teen Titans, Black Canary and Huntress from the Birds of Prey, and of course the iconic DC Trinity composed of Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. Well-known villains like Joker, Lex Luthor, Darkseid, and Deathstroke are also playable. It might be because I read less DC compared to Marvel, or the fact that Marvel has much more iconic characters, but I was really shocked with the roster for this game and just how deep it went. It's so cool that characters like Mr. Mixius Pedelec, Dr. Light, Jessica Cruz, Granny Goodness, Clock King, Condiment King, and Dexstar are here. A lot of the characters in LEGO DC Supervillains are not really known outside of DC Comics and animated shows, and that's nice. It introduces casual fans to new characters while being fun easter eggs for hardcore comic book fans. How you unlock them is also a delight. I really enjoy the open world. I like getting gold bricks, competing in races, doing quests to unlock characters and vehicles, and much more. It really gets you immersed in the world around you and makes Metropolis and Gotham feel all the more living and real. And once again, where the levels are set in during the main campaign is really cool. Throughout the main campaign, you visit Apocalypse, Gorilla City, Atlantis, and more. Anyway, big shout out to all the boss fights in both games, by the way. I love them so much. Even though they're all easy, the game really makes each one feel grand and epic. Plus, the combat animations the characters do during them are priceless. And I feel like, at this point of the video, I'm just kinda repeating myself. That's kind of what happens when you talk about two LEGO games at once. They're all actually 
pretty repetitive experiences. But as repetitive as they are, you can't deny that there is actually a lot of effort and polish behind these games. And because of their format, they're allowed to do the impossible. Recent games with big budgets and even multiple delays like Avengers and Gotham Knights have attempted to reach for the stars and let you play as multiple characters and visit multiple settings, but in doing so notably failed in terms of execution. Meanwhile, the LEGO games are able to bring to life the limitless comic book universe, a world known for its vastness and depth, and feasibly adapt a large portion of it into the video game format. There is a certain childlike joy that emerges when playing the game, visiting all the memorable locations and being able to play obscure characters you would rarely get to see in any other superhero adaptation is just so cool. Roaming the open world feels like playing with your childhood toys, which although may feel cheap, bring a sense of wonder you can't deny. I don't think I would ever regard LEGO Marvel superheroes and LEGO DC supervillains as revolutionary masterpieces. And they surely are not for everybody, but I appreciate these games for being simple and enjoyable celebrations of the superhero universe. And sometimes, simple fun is just what we need. My name is Joshua C, and I will see you in the next comic book video.